Thank you, Ms. Gaddy. Welcome. Thank you, Kim Gaddy, 208 Lines Avenue. Uh, my topic, we want an inclusive, affordable, and democratic city, but with zoning, the devil is in the detail. We agree with Mayor Baraka's vision for an inclusive, affordable, and dense city. After all, we're proud North residents living with our neighbors at double the density of Exus County and 10 times that of New Jersey. So we've been closely following proposed changes to Newark zoning laws that officials say will promote these goals. There's a statement we use as we seek environmental justice. Nothing about us without us is for us. With that in mind, SWIA commissioned an independent urban planning firm to evaluate the 386 page draft zoning overhaul. We're concerned that findings indicate a major disconnect between goals promoted by officials and technical details drafted by consultants, higher grow associates in Red Bank. Rather than modest changes described at public meetings, our analysis found thousands of changes that dramatically roll back building rules and weaken democratic protections that give residents a say in development. Let's be clear, we strongly favor development and urban density, living in one of the densest places in the nation. Community organizations have worked for decades to hold neighborhoods together and make density livable. We labor to preserve and enhance quality of life in the face of long-term disinvestment, absentee ownership, property development, and unconscionable landlord practices. This work has taught us about the importance of high expectations and accountability to residents as neighborhoods change. As Mayor Baraka states, we need activists to challenge and keep fighting for Newark. In the spirit of Nook Strong, a phrase I coined in our fight for climate resiliency, and I offer responses to this recent op-ed, he, um, as supporters and dedicated community members. Mayor Baraka writes, suburban communities are suppressing the housing market and making affordability almost impossible by opposing zoning laws that require more housing and more density. We agree that exclusionary zoning rules have been used to keep out people of color and working class families, facilitating our state's tremendous segregation by race and class. However, it doesn't follow that this remedy applies to Newark, where we already have some of the state's most permissive zoning rules and highest rates of development approvals, and where the majority of the population is black, Latino, and working class. In fact, the land area restricted by single family houses is less than 5% of the city. Number two, the mayor states, we know that adding housing to the market helps to stabilize rents and even drive prices down. Affordable housing was named as a top priority during the North 360 master plan process, and it's tempting to believe the argument made by conservative economists that allowing more housing of any kind will improve affordability for all. But data shows a more complicated relationship. Adding units may drive down rent slightly at the high end of the market, but for low-income rental housing, making it easier for landlords to extract more profits from the same property often results and a loss of affordable units and few speculative development of small apartments that push working families further into the margins. There are many factors driving the loss of affordable housing in cities around the world. Sadly, simply offering developers an incentive to build more rental units is not a quick fix for this huge challenge. And in a market like Newark, it may make the problem worse. While loosening zoning requirements and upzoning do not guarantee affordable housing development, they do give more power to private developers, undercutting the leverage North residents have to address their priorities, including affordable housing. The mayor writes, as North is being argued that density was caused flooding, but an undue strain on the infrastructure. This is not based on any real data. Newark once had a population of over 500,000 people. Density adds to flooding by increasing wastewater from new units and more impervious services that flows to our combined water sewer. Floods in Newark tend to occur in places where low-lying topography uh, combines with faults in aging and overburdened stormwater infrastructure. 
Also, when Newark hosted its highest population of 442,000 residents, it was in the 1930s when cars were not as prevalent and development patterns. Thank you, Ms. Gaddy. I'm sorry, you're out of time. Different. I'm sorry, I hate to stop you on it because you was on a roll. I was, I was, you know, all in to listen to uh, Miss Gaddy, but unfortunately, your time is up. All right, my sister. Thank you so much, Miss Gaddy. I'm gonna finish it up. Next speaker, Asada Rashidi. Welcome. We have. Is it a new copy? Okay. Yes. All right. Different one. Thank you. Welcome. Good afternoon, Asada Rashidi, the Environmental Justice Organizer for Southward Environmental Alliance. I'll finish up with Ms. Gadia saying, the new zoning proposal puts additional burdens on the system by reducing requirements for yard sizes, allowing more paved surfaces, along with major increases in density and wastewater. Four, the mayor writes the contention against allowing people to turn an extra room into their accounting office or letting someone do hair in their living room or sell food out of their kitchen or handmade crafts and t-shirts out of their home is reactionary and troubling. Our analysis shows that home businesses, including those listed, are currently legal by North zoning in all residential zones. We are happy to see that these kinds of businesses in our city, when it doesn't cause issues for our neighbors. However, proposed changes rearrange these categories in a confusing way, as well as require home business to apply for zoning permits, which seems burdensome. In the larger picture, some confusion about facts like these indicate we can all use more time for a refresher on our current law and the chance to deliberate further on what should be changed. We recognize that the building a city is a team effort and are ready to sit down with city leaders and others. We are not prepared to accept a major reworking of our zoning law and neighborhood fabric drafted by consultants without the chance for a real back and forth over critical details that will shape our lives and the neighborhoods for the decades to come. Now I'll switch over to mine. The ability for Southward residents to live in thriving and vibrant neighborhoods is a priority of Southward Environmental Alliance. Southward residents are tuned in and very concerned about the proposed zoning changes. Six weeks ago, our organization and at least 50 other North residents and groups submitted our positive suggestions and criticisms of the draft zoning law. During the most recent zoning meeting in the Central War, Council President McIver assured the community that we will be able to review the suggested changes from the administration before a final document is presented to the Municipal Council for adoption. So far, we haven't heard confirmation of receipt or response. We ask that all public comments be released along with the responses from the economic and housing development as a way to work towards a set of zoning changes that will help us all live and thrive. In the meantime, I'd like to highlight a few issues that we'd like to address before the new zoning law is considered by the Municipal Council. One, conflict causing business. business pro businesses. Proposed zoning permits more businesses that can cause conflict with neighbors and increase community violence such as bars, taverns, lounges, liquor stores, massage parlors, and boarding houses with over 20 tenants. These uses should not be converted to permitted uses, but should remain conditional uses with specific rules that deal with potential conflicts, including no noise, odors, vibrations, and other nuisances. Two. Decreased windows. Proposed zoning reduces minimum design standards by requiring less windows, leading to less healthy living spaces and less eyes on the street that contribute to public safety. We, we should preserve existing window, window requirements. Three, less open space. Proposed zoning, proposed zoning allows more paving around buildings, increased stormwater runoff, and increasing urban heat island effects. We should preserve existing requirements that limit paved services. These changes will also allow smaller and shallower backyards, decreasing the quality of life for tenants and neighborhoods. Instead of asking development to meet our expectations, these changes lower the bar and declare nearly anything acceptable. Four, weaker, envir weaker environmental protections. Proposed zoning weakens environmental protections for residents. For example, new rules expand truck intensive uses and airport airport support zones, and permit light manufacturing and mixed-use one residential and business zone. The zoning ordinance should be harmonized with the city's landmark environmental justice law to make potentially hazardous uses into conditional uses and be required to complete the environmental justice checklist. Five, too crowded. Proposed zoning allows absentee landlords across Newark to carve out new smaller apartments in existing two-family and three-family houses, decreasing housing quality and contributing to the neighborhood stress. Newark residents already live at an 
live at a residential density twice of that of Essex County and 10 times that of New Jersey. Six, infrastructure stress. Proposed zoning permits most intensive development in areas with serious environmental and flooding issues. For example, South Ironbound will permit eight-story apartment buildings with hundreds of units instead of four-story four -story buildings permitted today. Seven, home businesses. Contrary to the current Contrary to the recent arguments made for the new zoning, no changes are required to legalize home businesses since current zoning laws allow all kinds of home businesses like tutoring and computer work. And I'm going to run out of time, so I hope that you will look at the rest of the points and have them addressed before making changes to the zoning law. Thank you so much, Ms. Marshida. Thank you. Thank you. I, um, Thank you so much, Ms. Gaddy. I, I definitely want to take the opportunity to thank the, real quick before we go to the next speaker, to thank the South Ward Environmental Alliance and the amazing young people who came out today to talk about the Nuzzler, um, which we've been having lots of conversation, lots of organization and groups. Last meeting we had an organization from Forest Hill and other um, different um, organizations that have come out and voiced their opinion regarding the Nuzzler. And it's very healthy conversation, definitely healthy debate. Um, we love to see it. We love for you guys to come here and even through our community conversations that many of you have been present and active and there um, to talk about it. And definitely, as we've stated in the past, this council has not passed um, anything yet. Um, I think that the administration is reviewing all of the information we've been getting, tons, you know, the letters, tons of organizations speaking out to present some new changes based off that diet dialogue to the amendment to the council to consider um, we're just not there yet today but I, I'm loving all of the dialogue and the conversation um, the healthy healthy respectful wonderful conversation that we're having about it is really appreciated Ms. Gaddy and I'll swing to any other council members that want to add some comments Councilman Crump thank you council president I, I just wanted to ask uh, if we can get an electronic copy of what was what you were given us because it's cut off and at the bottom so we're missing some of the language I oh, just okay. want to make sure we get it all. I'll email it to you. Okay. Yeah. Council, Councilman Council. Yeah, again, I just want to uh, thank Kim and, and Jim and the entire, you know, South Ward environmental uh, organization who continues to organize young people in the South Ward and uh, lead them uh, in the path of, of not just understanding the importance uh, of agitating around environmental justice, uh, but also the importance of being civil pioneers in their communities. Uh, and keeping them engaged and involved in, in the things that are happening uh, on the ground, uh, which is uh, fundamentally principled in the fact uh, that they are aware of what's happening uh, in their communities, not just from the environmental perspective, uh, but also from the social justice impacts uh, that they have. So, um, you know, just, uh, you know, continue uh, success in the work that is happening uh, with, with SWAYA uh, as we continue to try to change the narrative for environmental justice, not just around the city of Newark, uh, but also on the South Ward. Thank you so much, Councilman Council. Any other comments from council members? Uh, Councilwoman Scott Roundtree? Yes, Ms. Gaddy, thank you also. Um, I did all the uh, comments from my colleagues for the South Ward Environmental Alliance. Um, we do know that that one word is, is about justice and also about healthy living and helping us live longer and helping us breathe better and, and at the same time looking out for those who or in our neighborhoods that might not be aware or conscious of some things. And that's what these meetings are all about, people being conscious and being told and being and information being shared that will help us. Some of us don't know, and some of us don't hear, especially those who are tuned in. So once again, thank you. And, once, and thank you for, I guess, introducing the young people um, to take a stand uh, about what is right for our community. So thank you again, Ms. Gaddy, Mr. Young and South Ward. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you, Ms. Gaddy, again. Next speak. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was I didn't see your hand go up. Councilman Gonzalez and then Councilman Ramos. Forgive me. Yeah, thank you, Gary, uh, for doing what a lot of people don't do is uh, analyze the document yes. and have yes. a, a, a report. This that's a, a a document that is intimidating because of its uh, length. It is 360 pages. A lot of people are not going to to spend the time analyzing that Do document research. as you did. And uh, I congratulate you for doing that. Thank you, Councilman Gonzalez. Councilman Ramos, I'm sorry. Yeah. 
Uh, thank you, Council President. I, I too want to say thank you to you, um, Kim Gaddy, and your organization, and, and all the other organizations who've really taken a deep dive and done a very thorough analysis and assessment on what the proposed zoning changes mean uh, for the city of Newark. You know, I, I share a number of the same issues and concerns. You know, I know um, it's well intentioned in the sense that you're trying to create an environment where you have uh, the potential development of uh, more affordable units uh, within the city of Newark, uh, but, but it does come at the expense of um, you know, a lot of important authorities that are embedded in the Board of Adjustment, the Planning Board, and, and sometimes those bodies may be slow and deliberate, but I think they are purposely slow and deliberate. And, and in many instances, it provides the only voice that the community has related to different projects that are being proposed in various neighborhoods. So, you know, I agree with Councilman Gonzalez. This is a, a very lengthy, um, complex plan. Uh, administration did the best they could as far as having public hearings, um, but, but it does require a high level of analysis. And I think your, your assessment and your organization's assessment is, is very important uh, for this body as we consider uh, whatever comes back to us in the near future. Thank you. Collecting the data, as you know, he's not here right now because he's taking care of some other business outside of City Hall today. I know he's going to make it his business to get the information to you all within the next week or so from when he comes back. Okay, sounds great. Thank you so much. Now, if we can have the deputy mayor come up, um, the councilman Ramos, and forgive me, Councilman Ramos, almost forgot about your um, request. Um, Councilman Ramos asked in regards to when will the city, the administration be bringing back any changes or recommendations to the council regarding the Nuzzler. Um, I got that, that's my first time saying it like that, the Nuzzler. <laughs> yes, council president, uh, council members, Allison Ladd, director of economic and housing development to the question asked by council member Ramos about the status of the Nuzzler returning to the full council. Uh, we're expecting it. The soonest would be next week's meeting, but it's likely the first meeting in August. The reason for that is, is that we got a high volume of comments that came in by the June 14th timeline, and we wanted to make sure that we gave each one proper attention, as well as go through all of the uh, community meetings that we held during the last ni uh, 90 days. So it's more for us to make sure that we're treating each comment with respect, and we're analyzing that as it relates to the full Nuzzler, and as we know, it's over 300 pages, so we want to make sure we're being detailed um, and precise. Council President, just a yes, quick Council follow Yes, Council so, so the comments that you received as a result of the public hearings, the, the written comments that have come in through email, written correspondence, is your department simply just going to respond to those uh, comments and observations, or are you looking to incorporate changes in your proposed plan based on those observations that have come in from, you know, plethora of community groups, elected officials? Like, what happens at this point? Like. Uh, sure. Council President, to Council Member Ramos's question, we have been taking every um, comment seriously, um, and we have reviewed every comment that's come into our office. We had set up a special um, email um, address, which we shared at all community meetings and was widely publicized, and we also took comments even if they were not sent to that main address. So our, um, in our position, we are working with our um, legal counsel for the, and our planner that we've hired for the Nuzzler, and we're reviewing all of those comments. Uh, we will make recommendations to the business administrator and the mayor, and once those are agreed upon, they will come back to the full council. So we are taking all comments seriously. So, so I'm sorry, Council Bird. So once, once you come back to us, granted that there's minor or significant changes in your proposed uh, change, uh, zoning changes, what happens? Does the council then re refer this back to the planning board for review based on the fact that there were changes made to your original um, um, uh, zoning uh, changes? Uh, great question. At this time, I wouldn't want to speak without talking to my legal counsel on that. I would say, though, that we have 
um, pulled together all the comments, and depending upon what changes are agreed upon will depend upon that course of action, which is also why I stated whether or not it'll come back to you as soon as next week, or it may take till the first week in August, because we're trying to follow the state law as it relates to this Nuzzler being passed here locally. When, when can we expect to get your revisions? Right now, it's under review by the administration, and as soon as I'm able to provide it to council, I will. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Councilman Quintana? Yeah. Deputy Mayor, in terms of the different folks, I got calls. I've been getting calls from the different ethnicity groups throughout the city, from the Portuguese, the Hispanic community, saying in terms of the language, they're not, you know, it's not translated. And I think that your department needs to translate some of this uh, to those that may need it. Uh, so this is, I, I can get those emails that have been sent to me saying, what can it be translated? Can we know what it means because, because of language barriers? Not everyone is, you know, uh, fortunate to, you know, to speak English. There's people in this town that speak French, Portuguese, and Spanish. So we need to translate that, get it translated, so that we can, you know, these are the calls that are coming that I'm receiving too, beyond the other calls that are coming. Uh, yes, Council President, to Councilmember Quintana's question, uh, we did have the entire Nuzzler translated into Spanish. We did have multiple community uh, slide decks translated into Spanish. We did have both Spanish and Portuguese translators available at several meetings in which they were actually translated simultaneously, at least at a minimum, in the East Ward where there was a d direct request. And um, we'd be happy to answer any other constituent questions related to it, and we'll do our best to meet their needs so they can understand exactly what's happening. Madam Chair. Councilman Council. Yes, I, I just want to make sure that this is not double tiered. So I know that there's going to be information that is provided to us. And then prior, will there be another community discussion or a public hearing that is going to happen here that uh, folks can be able to tune into uh, about the movement of the documentation or the document? Um, uh, Council President, um, I, I do not want to guess, but I do want to speak in this way a hypothetical, because I would say that hypothetically, if there are no significant changes, hypothetically speaking, then the process is, is that the ordinance comes back to the city council, the council will consider it on communications, then you will consider it under first reading, then under second reading and final passage, there will be a public hearing. That's hypothetically the process. If there is guidance from our legal counsel that there needs to be a modification due to significant changes, then I'd have to come back and speak to you on that, but this is hypothetical. Oh, thank you, Deputy Mayor, for explaining our process to us as the council. <laughs> Appreciate it. Every ordinance requires us to have a public hearing, just for FYI. Any other comments from council members or questions for the Deputy Mayor? Councilman Silva, did you have something? Uh, yeah, I will not be here on the second, and I think that um, it's important that I'm here when that vote happens or whatever happens on uh, August 2nd, if it doesn't happen on the 19th. And I think uh, I have a lot of issues with the uh, with the plan, so uh, I just want to put that on the record that I won't be here. So hopefully it, it won't happen on the second either, and wait for my return from vacation. Any other questions or comments from council members? All right, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Council President. You're welcome. Council members. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Public hearing. Almost forgot about that. The most important piece of our council meetings. Of course. We are now in a 30 minute public comment portion of the meeting. Each speaker will have three minutes to speak. Is there anyone present wishing to address the council? Please step to the podium. Thank you. My name is George Summers, 97 Heller Parkway, Newark, New Jersey. Um, there are so many problems uh, that members of the community have with this uh, amendment to the zoning ordinance. Among other things, it would do away with any one family residential area. So all, all those good jobs that are being created in downtown Newark and all the money those people are making, 
what you're basically telling them is, no, don't stay in Newark or don't buy a house in Newark. Go, go to Maplewood, go to South Orange and take all your money with you. So the money you're making in Newark, take it out of Newark instead of spending it maybe at a little coffee shop that somebody opens up in Newark or a little bodega. That's point one. Point two, it will increase massage parlors, liquor stores, bars, hookah bars, all over the city because it's increasing these types of establishments being allowed in multiple different types of zoning uh, uh, in, in many different places because of the change in what's allowed in different zoning areas. This is a, is a zoning ordinance that will do great damage throughout the whole city. And this is being addressed by the Southern Alliance and they got some funds and Damon Rich is doing an analysis of this ordinance. But what I want to particularly speak to is how it will trash the six or seven historical districts in Newark. Absolutely gives no special consideration to historical districts. It will allow in historical districts to put up little ADUs. It will take, uh, it'll make every one family zone property, two family, two family, three family, three family, five family. So I know that the Southern Alliance is speaking to um, how this zoning ordinance will trash the city of Newark. But I, 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 um, I wrote a little something that would be uh, applicable to at least protecting the historic districts and give special consideration to them. And if possible, I'd like to give this to the clerk so that uh, one of these could be given to each member. And it's, not a, it's not an elegant idea or a great idea, but what it is is just a four paragraph uh, amendment to the uh, amendments to the zoning ordinance, which would keep in place the, uh, the zoning ordinance as it now stands for historic districts. Wouldn't freeze it in place forever, but it would say, listen, if you're gonna pass an amendment to the zoning ordinance, at least give some special consideration to the historic districts. And what that means is- Thank you. Okay, and one last thing, I would, can I make one last comment? Your, your time is up, I'm very sorry. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much for your comments. We really appreciate them. Any other speakers? Any other speakers? Good morning. Good morning. My name is Paul Agostini. I live at 400 Ridge Street. Uh, I just want to bring out one point that probably hasn't been submitted to you during uh, the public comment period that we had during the zoning uh, hearings throughout the five wards. Uh, there was a decision at the appellate court ruled in a case involving Point Pleasant Beach uh, that under state municipal land use law, a town zoning ordinance determines how the land is used and not who occupies it or uses it. And th this is in conflict with uh, what was presented to us during our, our North Ward zone meeting, uh, because in the absence of, uh, it was purported by the city that they could rule, uh, if you allow ADUs, they can put in uh, an owner-occupied uh, attachment to it. And this is in conflict with that. I, I don't know if anybody had looked up this 2019 appellate court decision. And in doing so, um, all it's gonna do is provide a business model for LLCs who already control probably 25% of the residential market now, and their share will only increase because now they'll have this business model where they can also purchase a single family home and also build ADUs on them and rent everything. There will be no home ownership. All it will do is diminish the percentage of homeowners in the city of New York. I just wanted to add that piece. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next speaker. Any other speakers? Okay, seeing none, public speaking is now closed. Any responses from council members regarding public comment? Councilman Ramos? No, I, I just uh, wanna thank the um, 
representation that's here from the uh, Forest Hill Community Association. You know, I, I share many of the uh, concerns that you all have uh, related to how this um, would essentially uh, negatively, to, 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 be, um, to be kind, ne negatively impact our historic district uh, throughout the city, how it would diminish the authority of our Board of Adjustment which is intended by law to be slow and deliberate. And at the same time, sometimes it's the only voice that our residents have uh, related to various uh, development projects that are proposed throughout the city of Newark. So, you know, it's important that we do hear uh, from those organizations who have taken the time uh, to analyze and participate in our public hearings and at the same time uh, put together some observations and suggested suggestions regarding the proposed a, a zoning amendment, so thank you. Totally noted, Councilman Ramos, thank you. Councilman Gonzalez? Yes, as, as a resident of uh, Forest Hill, uh, I believe that the, it, it would be detrimental uh, in, in a lot of ways. Uh, say parking is going to be reduced, uh, school children are going to increase and we don't have the, the spaces for the kids to go to school. There is a lot of, uh, I believe, negative effects of this ordinance as proposed. Uh, I have received all the emails and uh, I apologize for not responding to your emails, but I agree uh, in most part with uh, what you are claiming in the, with the emails and uh, unless uh, uh, changes are made to the ordinance, I am not in support of what is being proposed. Thank you, uh, Councilman Gonzalez. Dallas, any other comments? Okay, I just wanted to end on a note that I, I do um, want to thank everyone who um, is out speaking about the Nuzzler. Um, we have gotten emails from all over the city, not just the Forest Hill location, but from many different organizations, many different groups, many different residents um, who have been engaged, civically engaged in the process. Um, just hundreds, not hundreds, but uh, many letters have come to us and we've, we many of us have attended attended the community meetings. Many folks have been out to the community meetings. So we thank you for your input. This is what it's about. Like this is an attention thing. This isn't a, you know, a bad thing. We should have dialogue. We should have conversation. We should have these type of processes taking place when we're making plans um, for our city that we live in and that we love. So it's a dialogue that continues. We look forward to having more conversation. I just want to note again that the council is not approving anything for the Nuzzler today. And at this point, we're not sure where, when it will come back to us to um, take a look at but we hope soon but at the same time we'll continue the administration as, as well as the council will continue to keep the public updated um, of how we move forward um, with this uh, with the Nuzzler and moving forward with this so we, we really thank everyone for their comments and all of the letters um, that we have gotten from everyone. Councilman Quintana. I'd like for the clerk to read the letter correspondence uh, that I received, and we all received from Senator Teresa Ruiz. I'd like to have the clerk read it into record. Madam Clerk. Okay. Letters dated July 10th, 2023, addressed to Mayor Baraka, Council President McIver, and council members. I fully support the vision of improving Newark and making it a more affordable city for families to live and grow. The work I've done at the state level joined this commitment. However, we must be mindful in how we approach that goal so as to not burden existing families and communities in different neighborhoods. In news reports, advocates from one end of Newark to the other have expressed apprehension. I join with the many who have expressed concern and opposition to this presented plan as their elected official, as their advocate, and as their neighbor. Some excerpts from documents that were submitted are as follows. Residents feel that the legalization of accessory dwelling units in the form of backyard, garage, and carriage house apartments without public notice or planning board hearing will be detrimental to our neighborhood's quality of life and the city of Newark's progress. The zoning amendments are weighed in favor of developers and against residents and constituents, as shown by the overall reductions in public oversight requirements for developers. 
Forest Hill Community Association. Our quality of life is negatively impacted by what we experience every day. Further zoning proposals will change our neighborhood's landscape permanently, i.e. minimizing street setbacks and are designed to allow R1 lots to operate as R2 with the ADU proposal or mixed use by permitting businesses to run out of a single family home, therefore eliminating R1s as we know them. We quay residents against density. There is a struggle about land and people. And from the environmental justice standpoint, there's no more land that we're going to get in this city. You're decreasing the green space. You're increasing the potential flooding in the community. And it's going to change the quality of life because it's going to cause crowding. And it's also is reducing parking. South Ward Environmental Alliance. I am fearful that it would be to the detriment of the city to expand land use and zoning statutes to upzone already saturated neighborhoods and allow accessory dwelling units without proper vetting. The areas identified in the master plan upzone are already overpopulated, which is evident in the double, triple parking you see driving down these streets on any given day. In addition to allowing accessory dwelling units in the form of backyard, garage, and carriage house apartments without public notice or planning board hearing is extremely irresponsible, threatens the integrity of historic districts around the city, and eliminates public participation in the process. There are things that can be done to strengthen economic development, improve affordability, and grow our city in a responsible manner. There are several housing initiatives pending which should be counted towards the total goal in our master plan. The retail in our main streets corridors should undergo a redevelopment assessment and signage and streetscapes should be uniform to make these spaces more welcoming for visitors and residents alike. Municipal parking must be considered in every area. There are respective spaces which could be used to address concerns around parking availability and overcrowding. I'm hoping that you revisit this process that the members of the Municipal Council do not vote and that I collectively work on a plan that will strengthen and support the great city that I call home. Thank you for your attention to this consideration on this matter. I look forward to being a partner going forward. Senate Majority Leader M. Teresa Ruiz. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Can we get an adjournment, please? Yes. George Somers. Okay, we'll just, we stand behind you now. Yeah, Hi, I was uh, before the uh, City Council, I guess, at your last meeting on um, July 11th, and um, I talked about the uh, proposed amendments to the zoning ordinance, and there's been a lot of uh, meetings and a lot of uh, people have objected to it strenuously, and I would respectfully request that you ask Allison Ladd, when is she going to have the next iteration of this zoning ordinance so that it can be shared with the, uh, the people of Newark? I think she's here today, and maybe uh, you could call her to the podium and ask her that question. When are you going to have the next iteration? I know the next meeting of the City Council is August 2nd, if I'm correct, and I don't think it should just be plopped down in front of you on August 2nd. I think it I think how they've dealt with the, literally, as I understand it, thousands of comments is uh, something that should be given back to the people before then so that uh, uh, they have a, uh, the process can go on and they can see what's been done, see whether or not their comments have been fairly addressed. So I would hope that you would ask Ms. Ladd up here and find out when she's going to have that and not just plop it on your desk on August 2nd. Uh, that's point number one, um, and I think it's an important procedural point. Point number, then I just would like to comment that I, that I, uh, I really think, uh, and based on all these comments and all this citizen input, that this ordinance uh, or these amendments to the ordinance are just a monstrosity, and the whole process should start over again. And I would just like to go through, like tick off a number of items, probably you've all heard these items already, but if you don't mind, I would tick them off. Um, the pr proposed zoning changes, 
would permit the proliferation of bars, taverns, lounges, liquor stores, massage parlors, vape stores, body person tattoos, and this would happen all over the city. Why is that a good thing? Who does that serve? I've, I've, some people have said, oh, we want to have more affordable housing. Well, how does the proliferation of massage parlors advance affordable housing? <laughs> Just doesn't make sense. And um, then I would also point out that um, right now, the city of Newark has a density of 12,469 people per square mile. In Essex County, it's like half of that, 6,843. In New Jersey overall, it's only 1,259. Why are we changing the zoning ordinance so that now one family becomes two family, two family becomes three, three family becomes five family. All that's going to do is increase the density, popula population density, I'm sorry, in the city. We're already twice as dense as the, city, as the county of Texas and something like ten times as dense as the whole state. That's not upzoning. I've heard that phrase, upzoning. That's not upzoning the city of Newark. That's downzoning it. That's kind of like slumifying it. I, I've heard several people uh, uh, come to the stand today and talk about um, uh, how they feel they're being mistreated by, by investors. This is a giveaway to investors. It says, hey, buy property, and now instead of having three family, you have five family, seven family, eight family. That's not going to help the people of the city of Newark. That's a giveaway to investors. And by the way, I'm an attorney, and some of those people who commented, if you want to speak to me afterwards about any slumlord, I'm glad to, uh, maybe I can help you out. Um, all right, and, and let's talk about some other changes that just make no sense. Here's another change. Reducing the number of windows in buildings. What purpose does that serve? That's, that, that provides less amenity to the person living in the building and uh, it provides less eyes on the street. And the changes go on and on, increasing the amount of paving, ADUs, do away with all one residential family neighborhoods so all the people who are making good money, I said this last time in those new jobs in downtown, tell them we don't want you to live here. Don't spend your money here. Go to Maplewood, go to South Orange. No, let them stay in Newark, spend their money in Newark, and let them spend their money at a little coffee shop that maybe somebody in Newark opened up, somebody who's been living here for 50, 50 years, or spend it at a bodega. Don't chase them out so they take their money with them to Maplewood. I could go on and on with more and more. Thank you, Mr. Summer. But the, the last thing is I No, have, thank you, Mr. Summer. Your time is up now. You can send so the clerk, someone from the clerk's office will get your stuff right here. Thank you, Mr. Summer. Thank you so much. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a good day. Tell it your hunter. Good afternoon, Mr. Paul. Uh, uh, good afternoon. My name is Paul Agostini, and I reside at 400 Ridge Street, Newark, New Jersey, 07104. Today I would like to address some concerns fellow neighbors have expressed regarding the proposal to allow the installation of accessory dwelling units, ADUs, in the backyards of homes throughout Newark. There's currently a property owner on Lake Street located a few doors north of 2nd Avenue who illegally began building a two-story structure that unfortunately still remains after stop work orders was issued by the city some time ago. This eyesore is readily visible from 2nd Avenue as you travel east towards Highland Avenue and look north. Imagine if there were more two-story structures appearing in the backyards of those particular homes headed north towards Abington Avenue. Adding density to that block would compromise the safety of all the original residences and its occupants by creating a connecting fire trail to adjacent fence lines, trees, and garages with vehicles in them. Why would we want the safety of our own first responders to be compromised by purposely allowing a hazard to be created by our own design? Oddly enough, there was never, there has never been any mention on how these ADUs were going to be connected to water, sewer, electric, and gas lines during the community zoning meetings 
that previously took place throughout the five wards. Is the aforementioned going to be accessed through existing homes or are they going to be brought in through separate lines from the street? There are also types of ADUs that are constructed and installed on trailers with wheels. How will those types of homes, which are typically built to use propane tanks, be treated? Since they are not theoretically stationary structures, what part of the building code will they be subject to, if at all? During the community zoning meetings, it was purported that ADUs would enable an elderly homeowner to remain on the premises by granting that person the option of living in either structure while renting out the other. The cost of constructing an ADU, the increase in homeowner's insurance, the increase in property taxes, along with other expenses associated with its maintenance and repair, will require a significant sum in monthly rent to offset that type of investment. This consideration has been impacted dramatically by the recent passage of property tax relief by the state targeting homeowners age 65 and over, which will take effect in 2026. So why would any elderly homeowner in Newark now go through the time, trouble, and expense of becoming a landlord at this point in their life when they will now receive a 50% reduction on their property tax bill up to $13,000? The other aspect involving our seniors that was cited addressed the possible future need of a homeowner to take in an elderly parent. This is a very real concern for many families, but again, one that has been handled in the past without taking the path of constructing an ADU. Countless families throughout the city have always made accommodations in their existing home to provide a living space for an elderly parent by renovating either the attic or basement into temporary living quarters for the remainder of that person's life. A more humane arrangement that leaves the one in need connected to his or her family and avoids isolating them in a separate building from everyone else. This is also a more financially prudent option and enables that existing space to be occupied by an older child in the near future or an easy conversion of that space back to its original state. Uh, the previous speaker, George Summers, handed, I believe, the clerk uh, petitions that were signed and collected by uh, members of my neighborhood uh, through e-petition and also hard copy. And I think they uh, number over 360. I just wanted to state that since he didn't get a chance to uh, tell you what they were about. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Third speaker is Shivani Hurry. Present. Good evening, Ms. Hurry. Good evening. Shivani Hurry here. So I'm here today to discuss the city's new land use and zoning amendments. Currently, the general public has until April 24th to provide comments on the new zoning amendments. The issue here, however, is the community was only given less than a week to review a 380-page detailed document before the Department of Economic and Housing Development requested feedback, only a week. This is an adequate time to review this, and it's actually a gross matter of injustice and, frankly, undemocratic. Because the zoning amendments will drastically impact Newark, we are asking for a 90-day time period in order to have experts and leaders review the amendments before we can actually provide feedback, what we like and what we don't like, which I believe is more than fair. In addition, and frankly, the city should provide more transparency of what the new zoning regulation changes are in plain English, because not everyone is familiar with zoning terminology and legal terms and the complexities of regulations, but we all do live in Newark or work in Newark, so we should have input since we are a community. It's up to the city to provide this opportunity since we are a system of democracy, supposedly. Lastly, although again, we do need more time to review these documents so 380 page long before an official comment is released, here's some of the concerns while I was reading it. Newark zoning reform will actually provide more housing, which is great. But the challenges are the new units affordable. What are the current definitions of affordability when it comes to these new buildings? And whom will be the true people that benefit from these new sky rises? The median household income of Newark is a little over $37,000. So we do have low income residents who need a home. So will they benefit from, benefit from these new zoning regulations? 
Based on the research that I've done, there's also growing concern that upzoning will incentivize landlords to sell their properties at inflated prop, um, prices. How does the city plan to tackle these possible displacements and property taxes that may, in fact, impact increases because of upzoning? And Newark floods a lot, especially ironbound. Um, so will these new units and accessory dwelling units combat, combat flooding and the weak sewer systems that we have? So nonetheless, uh, these are adequate questions and concerns that we have um, and we should have answers to. And we do need, again, more time to provide full feedback, uh, at least 90 days. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hurry. Next speaker is Maria De Jesus. Up here. Good evening. Good evening, thank you. Um, hi, my name is Maria De Jesus. Um, as well as Shavani, I agree. We, didn't, we do need more time to review everything and have more public meetings. I feel like you guys only had two meetings and not enough people were able to attend. Um, that was my biggest concern. Another thing is, it's 380 pages, it's only in English. What about everybody else who does not speak English and may want to contribute? You may have some homeowners who may want to read about it and maybe acknowledge themselves or tenants and they don't know anything because it's not in their language, which I find that to be a little discriminative coming from Newark. Um, another thing is, I do agree the ADUs do cause a lot of concern for flooding, especially since Newark with Ida, that was really scary. And how will we know that those units will be kept affordable? How are we going to keep record of that? How can we know that the lender's not going to, you know, add an attachment and then all of a sudden that rent is going to, that house or that apartment is going to go up to like $2,000 and it's a small, like one bedroom or a studio. Um, and again, what is affordable to you may not be affordable to your community. So keep that in mind as well. As the economy is going, plus inflation, I feel that the community is really suffering and they're barely catching up and whatever funds or may be available for them to get any kind of assistance is either very little or to a point that by the time they do hear about it, it's already finished. Um, that was my main concern was the ADUs and also just giving us more time, providing it in Spanish, providing more meetings, maybe more people could actually join and speak up. And the meeting that we had in Ironbound, we had a lot of people speaking up from the community. People were concerned about inflation in their taxes as well, because a lot of these homes are really soon going to be inherited as well. So just keep that in mind that as we do build, let's try to keep the community inside as well. And those who may not be able to partake in a lot of the things that you guys are doing, because a lot of it seems to be benefiting developers and not the actual community. And Hopefully these affordable units could help a lot of the people in shelters or in hotels who have programs, have Section 8, have TR8, but a lot of the landlords are refusing to take their actual vouchers. So let's work on that as well. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you so much for your comments.